Uh, my name is Tyler Burrell. I'm a senior, uh, double majoring in International Affairs and Communication Studies. Very great. And can you tell me a little bit about um, uh, EDS and how it has uh, affected um, you, uh, your, your life before and when you came to university? So EDS is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is a genetic connective tissue disorder that causes the collagen in my body to either not be uh, formed correctly or I don't have enough of it, um, which for me results in um, spontaneous joint dislocations, uh, chronic joint pain, uh, fatigue. There, there's a whole kind of host of symptoms that come along with EDS and it affects every patient differently. Um, in terms of how it affected me before I came to UGA, um, I was a competitive swimmer for nine years. It was my entire life. And I just started getting joint injuries. And we kept attributing it to, um, you know, being in the pool. And I was a butterflyer. So, you know, okay, shoulder injuries kind of, you know, run for the par. And it wasn't until kind of, all of my symptoms came together that we realized that um, we had been treating each injury as kind of an individual standalone problem and we realized there's something bigger to all of this and so that was when I started my diagnostic journey but I wasn't diagnosed until my first year here and uh, my first and the first half of my second year here were actually pretty good. Um, my symptoms were somewhat managed and um, my pain wasn't too out of control. And it wasn't until the spring semester of my second year that kind of everything fell apart and um, I was in so much pain. I was missing a ton of classes. It was hard to get any of my work done. And so that was when I took a year off of medical leave. Um, my intention was for it to be a semester off and it turned into a year, but then I came back and it's been pretty great ever since. Um, it's definitely due to the Disability Resource Center here on campus um, because they definitely help, um, help give me the tools to make it possible for me to be here on campus. For example, um, campus as everyone here at UGA knows is incredibly hilly and uh, because we're so widespread it's really difficult for me to walk around campus and get to classes so the paratransit service here on campus is incredible they can pretty much take me and drop me off at the door of wherever I need to be um, they offer testing accommodations and accommodations in class like um, you know, the, the setup in some of the classes with the desk attached to the chair and it's all hardwood and it's the most uncomfortable thing for any person in class, but really exacerbates my pain. And so they're able to put in um, accessible seating and desk um, situations. So, yeah, it definitely, yeah. it affects me in a lot of ways on campus, but I've, with the help of the DRC here, it's been manageable. Great, great. Can you talk a little bit more about, um, did the DRC help you um, come to meet Scorpio or how did that, how did, how did this relationship start? <laughs> so, let me see, where, where do I want to start this story? Yeah, yeah. Um, I or guess, what was it like to, like, yeah, like, tell me how it started and what was it like to meet him for the first time? Yeah, yeah. I guess Scorpio and I's story starts back uh, my first year here at UGA, there was another girl living in uh, Rutherford Hall, and she had a service dog. And I had the opportunity to talk to her and, um, you know, get to learn what he did for her and how he changed her life. And that kind of planted the seed. And as, you know, going through my second year here, as my health kept declining, I started thinking, well, you know, with all the guide dog puppies in training on campus and having met 
Danielle that first year and getting to talk to her about her experience with a service dog, I started wondering if a service dog would be helpful for me. And so I just started doing research. And I researched and I researched and I researched and then I researched some more. Um, and because it's there's such a wealth of information out there and it's absolutely not something to enter into lightly. Um, and so it wasn't until the end of my second year here when I started my medical leave um, that I went to my family and presented all the information that I'd learned and, um, you know, just kind of laid it all out there. Like something had to change. I knew if I wanted to get back on campus, if I wanted to have a semblance of independence again, that something was going to have to change. And I thought that that something could be a service dog. Um, given everything that goes on with my conditions, um, I was pretty confident that a service dog would be able to um, mitigate a significant chunk of my disability. And so after talking to my family about it, going to my doctors, talking to them about it, we kind of all agreed that a service dog would be a good option for me. And so that was when I started checking out programs and applying places. And I got lucky enough to be accepted by New Horizons Service Dogs, which is an incredible organization based in Florida. And they breed and train all their own dogs. It's, it's a stellar program. I'm incredibly grateful to um, have been able to work with them. And so it was, I, was actually back at school. I'd come back to school, um, I guess, in the fall. And then that was a rough semester, kind of getting back into the swing of things. And then in the spring, that was when I got the call from New Horizons that I'd been matched. And um, then it turned into a flurry of, okay, like make sure classes are set up and everything. And then uh, my mom and I went down to Florida and did the two week, uh, training to be matched with him because it's it's funny they say you know it's really to train the humans because the dogs know what they're doing they're incredibly well trained they are smarter than most children and um really it was about training the humans to know how to work with them and know how to read them um but i like vividly remember the first time i saw scorpio because it was the, I think the second day of team training and we were all sitting, we, everyone had spent like the first two days, like we're just waiting for them to bring the dogs in, right? That's what we're here for. And I remember they led the dogs in one by one and we're just walking them to whoever they were being paired with. And I remember Miss Janet, the director of New Horizons, um, she came around with Scorpio and I kept thinking that she was going to someone else and I kept expecting her to hand him off to someone else and she just kept coming closer and closer until I realized like, oh wow, there's, there's no one else over here. She's coming to me. And I think just like all the thoughts emptied out of my head and I just like, I later heard from um, the mother of one of the other uh, clients who had come she was like I thought you were gonna pass out you just went so pale and yeah I do I just I remember he was really distracted at first um, with all the dogs and all the movement happening in the room but there was a point where I got down on the floor with him yeah there he was really distracted at first and then there was this moment where he just kind of turned and he looked at me and he just stuck his head up against my chest. And it was like this moment of like, okay, I choose you. And then he completely calmed down and he laid down right next to me and fell asleep. And that was, it was, it was, I told myself not to expect that moment, you know, going in, like I didn't want to um, be disappointed with not having like an instant kind of like, okay, this is it moment. But it was, I always say that that was the moment that he chose me too. And it's been a beautiful pairing ever since. 
yeah, New Horizons really knows what they're what they're doing. Uh, that training class actually, we all graduated with the original dogs we were paired with. None of them were shuffled around, and that's it's really a testament to you know their experience and. Yeah, they, they knew what they were doing when they matched us, for sure. He's a very lovable dog, I get it. Um, so yeah, he, he becomes something of an unofficial mascot in every class that we're in. Um, but he helps me in a host of different ways. Um, some of the most frequent tasks that we use are retrievals. He does a lot of retrievals between things that um, I drop things that I need him to pick up off the ground and bring to me. Um, that saves me the pain of bending down, standing up, and also helps, um, I have another condition and it helps kind of mitigate that as well. Um, with his harness, we do a lot of momentum pulling and counterbalance and bracing work. So essentially what that means is he kind of gently pulls me forward as we're walking to give me some momentum. Mm -hmm. It means that I have to use less energy when I'm walking and really helps get me going, which can be tough on high fatigue days for me. Um, and then counterbalance, embracing. I kind of, um, I can lose my balance really easily when I walk. And so um, if I don't have someone with me, I can kind of weave as I walk and he helps just maintain that balance for me. So as I kind of feel myself veering over, he is kind of the grounding point for me. Um, he does a lot of bracing work for me. So if I am like sitting on the ground and I need to stand, he braces for me and I use him um, to, um, you know, put some gentle weight on to stand. Um, what else, bud? What else do you do? He loves holding things, uh, carrying things for me. So anything from, you know, my ID pouch to my phone to a grocery bag. If he sees me carrying something, he's like, but mom, I want to help. And so he loves carrying things for me. Absolutely. Um, we do something called deep pressure therapy which is where he strategically lays across different parts of my body to help alleviate pain. Um, it also helps, I have a lot of blood pooling due to another condition and um, it kind of helps push some of the blood in my lower extremities back up to my head. Um, so I've found that to be incredibly helpful because with EDS, we metabolize medication differently. So I don't have a lot of options in terms of pain relief. And so I found that heat and pressure are two of the biggest um, pain relieving methods for me that work. And he completely fits the bill. You know, he's like a living, breathing, weighted heating pad. Um, so that's been incredible. And then there are a bunch of things that he can do that um, I don't necessarily, um, like need in the moment, but he loves doing, he loves throwing things away. So he throws things away in trash cans all the time. Um, oh, we do a lot of button pushing. So like the handicap buttons for doors, um, because those, I mean, they, it's easy for me to dislocate my fingers pressing those. They can be kind of tough to push sometimes and he loves pushing them. So I let him do that for me. Yeah, he, he really can do it all. Like I said, like light switches, he can turn on and off. Um, he is smarter than me sometimes. <laughs> Pretty incredible. New Horizons trains their dogs to know over 80 commands. So they really are. They are incredibly intelligent. And, you know, I it always shocks me because even if we don't use a particular skill for a little bit, when we go back to it, he picks it right back up. He doesn't forget anything. It's, it's remarkable.